A bit of mold is a plaid of flowers. A nebula is an anthill of stars. Victor Hugo Hello dear friends, in today's video, we would like to tell you about one of the most vibrant and beautiful things in our universe, nebula. In this video, you will learn about different types of nebula and get acquainted with their characteristics. Get comfortable and let's begin. What is nebula and history of their discovery? Nebulae are vast clouds of dust and gases in space that serve as the breeding ground for the birth of new stars. Some nebulae are formed as a result of a star's death. After completing their life cycle, some stars explode as supernova, ejecting huge clouds of dust and gases into space. Other nebulae form when interstellar matter, including gases and cosmic dust particles, gather together and, under the influence of gravity, create clusters, forming regions of higher density. Originally, in astronomy, nebula referred to any stationary extended luminous astronomical objects which could not be resolved into stars. This includes star clusters or galaxies beyond the Milky Way. Some examples of such usage have survived to this day. For example, the Andromeda Galaxy is often referred to as the Andromeda Nebula. Charles Messier, who was intensely searching for comets, compiled a catalogue of stationary diffuse objects resembling comets in 1787. The Messier catalogue included both true nebula and other objects such as galaxies, for example the Andromeda Galaxy under the designation M31. As astronomy developed and telescope resolution improved, the term nebula became more refined. Some nebulae were identified as star clusters, dark, absorbing, gas dust nebulae were discovered, and finally, in the 1920s, first by Lundmark and then by Hubble, they managed to resolve the peripheral regions of some galaxies into stars, thereby establishing their nature. Since then, the term nebula has been used in the sense mentioned earlier. Classification of nebula The primary characteristic used in the classification of nebulas is absorption, emission, or scattering of light. Based on this criterion, Nebulae are divided into dark and bright ones. The dark nebulae are observed due to the absorption of light from the sources located behind them, while the bright ones are observed due to their own emission or reflection of light from nearby stars. The nature of the emission of bright nebulae and the sources of energy exciting their emission depend on their origin and can have diverse properties. Often, multiple emission mechanisms can be at work in one nebula. The division of nebula into gaseous and dusty types is largely arbitrary. All nebula contain both gas and dust. This division is historically conditioned by different observation methods and emission mechanisms. Let's start with dark nebula. A dark nebula is a type of interstellar cloud so dense that it absorbs visible light emitted by emission or reflection nebulae or stars. One example of such nebulae is the Horsehead Nebula. Dark nebula were first mentioned in the early 20th century. In 1919, Edward Barnard compiled a catalogue of dark nebula containing 182 such objects, each described with coordinates. In 1962, another catalogue was published listing over 1,800 of them. Dark nebulae are very cold gas and dust clouds, noticeable only by their fuzzy silhouette against the background of visible light from more distant objects. Their temperature does not exceed 100 Kelvin, which is equal to minus 173.5 degrees Celsius. Dark nebulae often serve as regions of star formation, the detection of which is only possible through observation of infrared radiation, which is much less absorbed and scattered by interstellar matter. If a sufficiently massive star forms within such a nebula, it can ionize the material and the dark nebula will become an illuminated or emission. Reflection Nebula This type of nebula is already illuminated by stars that are not hot enough to ionize a significant amount of interstellar hydrogen around them. Reflection Nebula were discovered in 1912 when Vesto Melvin Slipher analyzed the spectrum of the nebula associated with the star Merop in the Pleiad. He concluded that the source of its light is most likely the star itself, and the nebula reflects the starlight. Einar Hertzsprung's calculations in 1913 confirmed this hypothesis. Currently, there are about 500 known reflection nebulae, 
with the most famous one surrounding the Pleiades star cluster. Reflection nebula usually have a blue hue since the scattering of blue light is more effective than red, which is why the sky appears blue. Some reflection nebulae have a comet-like appearance and are called cometary nebulae. In the head of such a nebula, there is usually a variable star illuminating it. These nebula often have varying brightness. Planetary Nebula A planetary nebula is an area of cosmic gas and dust formed from the ejected outer layers of a dying star. Despite their name, planetary nebulae have nothing to do with planets. When intermediate mass stars, it means the star with a mass between 80 and 800 percent of the Sun's mass die, they expand, forming red giants. The dying star will continue to expel gas, while the remaining core of the star contracts and temporarily emits energy again. This energy causes the ionization of the expelled gas, meaning that atoms and molecules in the gas become charged and begin to emit light. The emitted glowing gas is known as a planetary nebula. Most planetary nebulae are faint objects and are generally not visible to the naked eye. The first discovered planetary nebula was the Dumbbell Nebula in the constellation Vulpecula. Already known to us, Charles Messier catalogued it with the name M27 in 1764. In 1784, William Herschel, the discoverer of Uranus, classified them into a separate class of nebula and called them planetary due to their resemblance to a planet's disk. The material of a planetary nebula disperses from the central star at speeds of several tens of kilometers per second Meanwhile, as the material is expelled, the central star cools down. Eventually, the star becomes a white dwarf and the gaseous cloud recombines, becoming invisible. The typical time from formation to recombination for a planetary nebula is 10,000 years. Supernova remnants The brightest nebulae are caused by the explosions of supernova stars and are called supernova remnants. They play a very important role in shaping the structure of interstellar gas. In addition to the described characteristics, they are also characterized by non-thermal radio emission with a power law spectrum. Nebulae associated with new star explosions are small, faint, and short-lived. There are two possible scenarios for the birth of a supernova star. A massive star, having exhausted its fuel, stops producing nuclear energy, leading to the star's collapse under the force of its own gravity, transforming into a neutron star or a black hole. Or, a white dwarf accumulating material from a companion star, a process called accretion, reaches a critical mass and collapses into a neutron star. In both cases, the supernova explosion ejects all or nearly all of the star's outer material into space at speeds of about 1% of the speed of light, which is about 3,000 kilometers per second. When the ejected material collides with circumstellar or interstellar gas, a shockwave forms, turning the gas into hot plasma, heating it to temperatures around 10 million Kelvin. One of the brightest examples when the remnants of a supernova explosion formed a nebula is the Crab Nebula. This cosmic catastrophe occurred back in the year 1054, but we are still witnessing a breathtaking sight. The gas cloud is gradually expanding, leading to the enlargement of the nebula. According to astrophysicists' estimates, the remnants of the supernova explosion exist for about one million years. After this time, the speed of the material's expansion in the nebula will approach the speed of the surrounding interstellar medium, and it will merge with it. In reality, the world of nebulae is incredibly diverse, with a vast number of unique formations. Often, nebulae resemble whimsical cosmic paintings, and nature is their creator. We have a unique opportunity to admire them, and the more closely we look, the more wonders we discover. Thank you for watching. If you enjoyed this video, don't forget to like and subscribe to the channel. Write your suggestions in the comments about what you would like to see in the next video. Your feedback is very important for the development of the channel. Thank you, and see you in the next video.